Today I'm going to show you how to make this 1 12th scale sofa with cushions, nice upholstered seat. And for this project you'll need a softwood um, such as a beige, which is one of my favourites, but you could also use um, basswood, lime wood, um, anything that's got a nice close grain and is easy to cut. And this is um, 1.5 millimetres thick or 1 16th of an inch. And I've used the sheet wood and the strip wood for the legs and the bottom support. You'll need a good wood glue, my favourite Gorilla wood glue. And this I find also works really well as a fabric glue. Um, but if you'd rather not use this one, you can use a, a separate fabric glue for when we come to upholster the seat. Paint and varnish, I've just used normal household interior paint and varnish. For the paint, these little sample pots are ideal. Cocktail sticks for applying your glue. And I always just dispense the glue onto a piece of card and apply it from there, just makes it easier. Um, steel rule, measuring and cutting your wood alongside your craft knife. And this is a um, Swan Morton craft knife, which takes a 10A blade. And this cuts easily through this thickness of wood. And in fact, up to three millimeters, you'll be able to cut with this craft knife. Always put a new blade in at the start of a project or if it begins to catch or drag during the project, that means it's becoming blunt. A nice sharp pencil, keep it sharp for accurate marking. And then when we come to do the seat, you'll obviously need um, a couple of coordinating fabrics. And I've used this nice soft cotton fabric and a piece of foam for the seat. And this is a six millimeter thick foam a quarter of an inch thick, nice sort of soft foam, and then I glue the foam to a piece of card, so any cereal packet or Rivita packet to use for that. To fill the cushions I use sesame seeds, you may have heard of this method, but it just makes the cushions look um, heavier and more realistic and you can kind of put dents in them and things. Of course you can just use um, any sort of stuff in the wadding if you prefer and just to get the uh, seeds into the cushion funnel but you can just use a piece of paper or card rolled into a tube and obviously you'll need your sewing kit for the cushions the cutting list is coming next and then we'll get started We're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the side and back panels. We'll begin with the side panel. So take your ruler and just make a measurement down this short edge and 22 millimetres and that's 7 eighths of an inch from this left hand edge. So just make a light pencil mark at either edge of the wood and then just join that up with a faint pencil line. And I've just got some glue here that I've dispensed onto a piece of card and I'm going to use a cocktail stick to apply it. And begin by applying the top moulding. And then just lay that across the top edge so that the edges of each piece are flush. Press that down. And then just have a clean cocktail stick handy so that you can just remove the glue from along the join there. And then take the central moulding And then you want to lay this just to the right of that pencil line and so that you're sort of hiding the line as well. And again, get rid of that excess glue. And 
And then finally, remain in horizontal moulding. And attach that along the bottom. And then when you're applying mouldings to wood like this, whilst they dry the wood tends to curl up. So I just use clothes pegs to hold those into place. So one on that central piece and then one at each end. And you can use clamps if you've got them. side. I've already done the first side piece. Leave those there to dry and then take the back panel and again we're going to make the pencil lines um, down the short edge and this time it's 32 millimeters and 68 millimeters from this left hand edge. So 32 and 68 and the same at the bottom and in inches that is one and a quarter inches and two and eleven sixteenths so one and a quarter inches two and eleven sixteenths and then just draw a light pencil line to join those two pencil marks And then beginning with the top horizontal moulding, apply glue, press that into place and then remove the excess glue. And it's so much easier removing the excess glue at this stage while it's still tacky than waiting and doing it with sandpaper after. But if you do find you've got any sort of glue residue left, you can remove it with sandpaper. And then these horizontal, oh, vertical moulding, sorry. And always work from top to bottom when you're attaching mouldings or, or any sort of... Um, things that you're putting into position. And again that's just to the right of that pencil line and I'm just sort of covering it up with the edge of that moulding. And another thing I do, and this probably seems a bit pernickety, but I check both sides of the wood and if like on here I've got a bit of a jagged edge on that side I always stick that edge down so that you've always got the nicest edge of the wood uh, showing on the piece and again just to the right of that second pencil mark so that you're just hiding it And then the remaining horizontal one. Place that along the bottom. Press into place. And then again, just remove the glue. And just attach the pegs or your clamps so that you're glue, um, holding down these two middle ones as well. And then at each end. And 
There. And then they can be left to dry. So once you've allowed sufficient time for the glue to dry, remove the pegs and then sand the edge of each piece, hold it against the sandpaper and just go along in the one direction. If you rock it back and forth you'll round off the edges and we want to keep it nice and square. So do that on all sides and I've already actually done these. And then you can actually hold the piece flat against the sandpaper and just go in a circular motion. And again I've already done these um, and that just makes sure that all the mouldings are nice and flush. So put those to one side for now. Take the leg pieces got the longer back legs and the front legs and bear in mind that the front legs are the longer piece um, out of the leg and the side support. It's only by half a millimetre but it will make a difference um, because the supports are the same width as the side pieces. So just make sure that you're using the right piece. And then we want to make a pencil mark six millimetres or a quarter of an inch from the bottom of each leg. So just a faint pencil mark and this will help us to line up the support. Like that. And now we're going to create a left and a right hand sided um, side piece. So Divide out the legs so you've got a long and a short, a short and a long. And then bring in the supports. You want one between each set of legs and one side piece. So apply glue to each end of the side piece. And then glue that to the very top of that front leg so that the top of each piece is flush. Press that together. Just have a clean cocktail stick handy to remove the excess glue. And then apply glue to each end of the support. and attach that so it sits just above that pencil line and you can use the grids here on your cutting mat if you have one just to keep it all straight press that into place and then we want to apply the long leg again so that this support is sitting just above that pencil mark Just keep your eye on that top piece so that it stays straight and I'm just using the lines here on the cutting mat to make sure that it's all lined up and it is. So just squeeze those together. And now we're going to create a mirror image of this. So again, apply glue to each end of the side piece. And attach that to the top of the shorter leg. Move in a bit closer. And again to each end of the support. And again, I'm using the lines on the cutting mat, 
placing that just above that pencil line. And then you can attach the remaining long leg. Line it up at the bottom first and then press it into place. So there we've got our left and our right hand seat side. They can now just be left to dry before we move on to the next stage. So once the glue is dried, you can erase the pencil marks at the bottom of the legs. And then turn the piece upside down and we just want to make a pencil mark in the centre of this bottom support. So just draw a line the centre of the underneath part and on the other one as well like that and then take in which will be left hand side piece we're going to attach the back panel so apply glue along the edge of the back panel and then glue it into place so again it's at the top of that back leg I'll do it upside down so you can see Just press those together for a moment. Oops. And then we're going to apply the seat part and that's going to sit in there. At this stage you can just double check that you've cut it the right size. If there's an overhanging edge here this arm won't fit properly so I think I've got about half a millimetre extra there, so I'm just going to sand that off. Yep, that's perfect now. And that's a good habit to get into as well, always be checking before you attach to check that everything's exactly the right size. It can be very annoying when the glue has tried to realise that it doesn't fit, the next part doesn't fit into place. Okay, so I'm applying glue to one long edge and one short edge of the seat part and then attach it so that it's right at the bottom of those joined pieces there. And I'm attaching it to the back panel first and then you can pull this arm up to meet the side piece Oops. and I'm just pushing that right in so that that arm is square with the back sure it's all flush and then turn it round and again remove any excess glue and then turn it onto the side and we're going to attach the central support and the pencil line we did there at the bottom we can use to line up the support so that it's centrally above that line so apply glue just to one end 
and glue that into place. I'm just doing it by eye but so that that pencil mark is in the centre of the support and I'm just making sure that it's flush as well. So now apply glue to all of these edges and the central support. And then lay the piece down on your worktop and attach the side piece so from the top first and again so that it's flush with the top of the back panel and then bring it in so that support is again centrally over that pencil mark and at the same time making sure that the seat is flush with the bottom of this side piece so keep checking everything and repositioning before the glue has time to set. And that's a little high there so I'll just push that down. And just use your finger to make sure that the seat is flush with the bottom of that side. And when you're happy that all the top pieces are in the right place just double check that that support has remained in the center So just carefully press it all together and then bring it back up like that and I'm just going to use some masking tape now to hold that all in position. So a piece over that end there. I'm going to do a piece over that end of that support just to hold that central support in place. And then finally a piece right around the middle there. And that can then be left to dry. So once the glue has dried, um, just turn it over and rub out the pencil marks at the bottom there. And if you ever find that pencil marks aren't rubbing out, it's probably because they've got a bit of glue residue over them, um, like in this case. So you can just use a piece of um, fine grade sandpaper and just sand them off. Otherwise they will still show through the paint. Okay, so now take the um, backrest and using a medium grade sandpaper we're just going to round over both ends, so both corners at each end. So just sweep the sandpaper over the corner like so until it begins to round and you can go that way as well which just makes a nice finish, a nice curve. Turn that over and do the other corner. And you don't want to go too harsh because um, you don't want to take away from the width as it'll be narrower than the back leg. So just gently round the corners off, the other end as well. Try to keep things even as well, so that both ends look the same. Okay, like so, and it's just nicer than having harsh square edges on things and that will go there so just pop that to one side for a moment and then we're going to do the same thing with each of the armrests but only at one end and they attach along here so we want to keep a nice flat end to go against that back leg 
and then we're going to round the other end. Same thing again, just sweeping the paper over the corner. Trying not to take away from the actual width. That's that one, and do the other one as well. And again, just at the one end. It look nicer, less harsh. Okay, so that's those. So, if you're planning on doing your bench all in one colour, then you can attach these now. So, you would just apply glue to the actual bench and then fit them into place. So, you've got a tiny little bit hanging over at each end, there's enough length there to do that, and so that it's covering the legs, so there'll be a bit of an overhang at this edge of the bench back panel and the same with these apply glue onto the bench and then they fit on there so that the back is straight with the leg but I'm actually doing mine two tones my bench is going to be cream and then I'm varnishing the backrest and the armrests and it's easier to do that when they're loose so my paint and varnish is now completely dry and that's actually just one coat um, of paint, just normal household enamel and then I've used a fine grade sandpaper just to sand all over. And I didn't paint this seat part because obviously that's going to be covered but everywhere else has had a coat of paint applied. Same with the um, varnished pieces, that's just one coat of varnish and then a light sand. We're now going to attach those, so you, you would have already done this if you painted your bench just in one shade. But I really like this two-tone look, because it gives it a nice sort of country cottage appearance. You could do what you like with yours. So apply the glue to the bench, and then just lay the strip on. You've got a tiny little bit of an overhang at either end. And then the back of this strip is flush with the back of the bench, so the overhang is at this front edge. Just press that down. And then I've just cut a few thin strips of masking tape and I'm just going to put them over just to hold it into place while the glue dries. And you can see that's already lifting up there. And that tends to happen when you're applying thinner wood to a piece of furniture. And just a piece in the middle there. And again, when you're placing these, do as we do with the wood. Always choose the best side, so where the varnish has dried. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's sort of heavy around the edges. And there I've got a nice smooth edge, so I obviously propped it up to dry on that side. So just always have a look before you glue things into place so that the nicest edge is always showing. Now applying glue to the arms. And then the back of this piece will be uh, flush with that back leg, so they're both 5mm thick. And this inside edge will be flush with the inside edge of the seat. glue and again I'm just going to tape that into place same with the remaining armrest choose the best side Just 
tape that into place. And then while they're drying, we can get on with the seat cushion. So just um, using any piece of card, this is from the old Rivita's packet, cut a piece of card that is just very slightly smaller than the area of the seat. So I've just taken off about a millimetre from each measurement, so from there, and a millimetre at the back, and that will just cater for the thickness of the uh, fabric that you're going to use. And then take your uh, piece of foam, this is slightly bigger than I need. If you've got a card with like a shiny edge and a matte edge, apply the glue to the shiny edge because the fabric will stick better to the matte side. Spread that on there. I'll just spread it there, do the job better. and then lay that onto your foam. If you do it along two straight edges, you're not wasting any, not wasting too much foam then. And just press that down and then you can just weigh that down with something. Don't use your best books because the glue might mark the cover. But th these are just my old pattern books. So just weigh those down and then that can be left to dry. And then we'll apply the fabric. So once the glue has dried on the foam covered card, trim around it and then just check that it fits nicely onto the bench and you should just have that small um, space all the way around to allow for the fabric. If you need to trim a bit off do it now and then cut a piece of fabric that is about 25 millimeters or an inch um, wider on all sides than your piece of foam and then the foam will go face down like that. Apply glue to each end of the card. And just glue those two ends over. Just make sure that the foam is straight and don't pull too tightly or you'll misshape it but tight enough so that there's no creases at the front and then just take the scissors and we want to trim off this square at each corner so go along the side of the card And you just go in to the bottom of that side edge like that and then trim off the square. Like that. And the same on the other side. And do that at both ends. bottom edge of the foam there. The last corner. Like that. And then we now want to trim off along here and again just to the thickness of the foam. So you just cut in a strip like like so and do that again on all corners and then just cut each of those in half roughly half
and then you can either apply foam to the fabric or the oh, apply glue, sorry, <laughs> to the fabric or to the foam. Like that, and then press them down against the side of the foam. In my other um, videos, I've done one for a, an upholstered bench. I just done a row of stitches at each corner, so that is another way you can do it. That's normally how I prefer to do it, but this seems quite neat. And the edges of this, of course, will be hidden behind the arms of the sofa, so... It's an ideal way to do it for this project and less time consuming too. Stick those down as well. And then apply glue to the long edges. And then you can pull over those sides. And again, not too tightly. I'll see those front corners look nice and neat. And doing the other side. cotton there, just snip that off. And then we have a nice upholstered seat cushion. Okay, so apply glue now to the actual uh, seat. I'm just going to move that out of the way so I don't splash it. Get right along to the front edge there. And into the back. And then, as I was saying earlier about making it your practice to always have the best um, side of your wood or the painted wood on show, let that be the case with everything. So, I think this is the neatest edge of my cushion, so I'm going to have that at the front. So just press that into place. And push it so that it's at the back of the seat. And then just press that down and press it down along this front edge as well and then look at those neat corners that's what I was saying about you don't see the sides here because of these arms so you get a really neat finish with that method I would say if you're doing something like the um, storage bench that, that I've done another tutorial for where all the corners are on show, then maybe the stitching method might be better. I'm pleased with how that looks. So there's the bench, and we now just need a couple of cushions. And I'm stitching my cushion, so I've cut some fabric here. For the cushion fronts, I've got two 
pieces. I'll just have a quick look at my templates. I always I do this quite a lot, so I've got templates for all of the pieces. And it's 45 millimeters square, and that's one and three quarter inches square. So that's the front of the cushion. And then for the back, I cut two pieces, and that way your seam is hidden at the back of the cushion. Like if you just stitch two pieces together, your your opening is going to be at the bottom. Um, and you can sort of see that when it's in place, it, it, it sort of curves upwards. So cut two more pieces for the back, and they're 45mm wide and by 22mm high. So that's one and three eighths of an inch by seven eighths of an inch. Okay, and then I've just drawn a line across there, just about a centimetre at either side, or 10 mil. Um, three eighths of an inch. I'm just going to stitch along there and then this will become the opening. And then on the back of each of these cushion pieces I've just done a, a border to give me a five millimetre hem around each edge. So I'm now going to stitch those together. So I've stitched together the two back pieces, leaving space in the middle for the opening. So open those out and just fold that hem, crease it in a bit and then you'll put in your two pieces uh, face to face and if your pattern's got a right way up then make sure that they're in the same direction and then you can just pop a few pins in to hold them together and then just stitch around your pencil line using a sort of back stitch and the smallest stitches possible and I've done the other one so that's stitched together so just go around and trim the hem off a bit this just gives it a neater finish when you fold it the right way around making sure you don't cut through any of your stitches Fold it the right way out. And they're quite small, so it's quite fiddly. paintbrush, something with a round end, not a pointed end, just to push those corners through. Like so. And then to fill the pillow or cushion I'm going to use um, sesame seeds which you're probably familiar with, and they just give the um, cushion a nice heavy look. Um, and it look if you put foam in them, they look really light, and they don't sort of sit into the chair. But this just gives them a heavier look, and you can sort of make dents and things in them. So take a funnel, or you can um, roll up a piece of paper or card. You don't need too many probably is too many. Just shake those in. And then you can stitch this back um, hem together, but just for quickness I like to glue it. So just apply glue along the wider part of the hem and 
then just glue just using this cocktail stick to push the hem in if the seeds start coming out just pop them back in and then sort of pull it to get the hem to join together one completed cushion. And there's the completed sofa. And this is another of those projects where you can have fun choosing the colours and the fabrics and the cushions, maybe you could do a, a crocheted cushion to go on there as well or a knitted one if you're good at miniature knitting and suit this sort of style sofa I've made another one here um, in the red fabric same fabric but just in the different shades and I've used a darker varnish here on the arms and the backrest so I hope you've enjoyed this project if you have, please subscribe because there's lots more to come. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see on my channel, just let me know. And I'll do my best to include it. I've already had a couple of requests which I've put up on the channel. And thank you for watching.